This is a video about the span of a set of vectors. The span is an important concept to understand because it allows you to know what subset of possible vectors in a particular space are accessible as a linear combination of the vectors in the set. In other words, it lets you know the complete set of solutions to a linear system of equations characterized by the coefficient vectors in the set. So for a set of vectors, v1, v2, up to vp, the linear combinations are b equals c1, v1, plus c2, v2, plus, and so on, up until cp, vp. So we scale each vector and add it together to create any b. And this is known as the span, the set of all possible linear combinations of the vectors v1 through vp is the span of these vectors. So for example, let's take a look at something in two dimensions. So here, suppose that our set is the vector 2, 1. So we have just one vector in our set. Let's call this vector v1. So this looks like this. And the span of this vector is going to be the set of all linear combinations. So basically any scalar multiple, c1 times v1. So it's going to lie along this line. And we can see that we can make up a point on this line out of a linear combination of this vector. For example, this point right here is 2 times the vector 2, 1, so this is 2 times v1. This one is negative 1 times v1, and so on. We can make up any point on this line as a scaling of v1. So therefore the span is this line. We can't get to any other point in the plane that's not on this line by using a linear combination of just v1 by itself. For example, if we try to get to the point 2 comma 2, so somewhere around here, this is 2, 2, we can see that we cannot get to it just visually because this point is not a linear combination of v1, but we can also show this by looking at the augmented matrix. So here we have 2, 1, our vector, and we're going to see what combinations of it can make up the point 2, 2, so this is augmented, and this reduces to 1, 0, 1, negative 1. And we can see that this last row here is inconsistent. And therefore, we know that we cannot get to the point 2, 2, but rather only to points on this line. So let's look at another example. Suppose now that our set consists of two vectors, 2, 1, and 1, 3. And let's call these v1 and v2. So v1 is the same as it was before. And v2 is something like this. And so now, we can see that the span is going to be all of R2. Because we can get to any point in R2 with a linear combination of these two vectors. For example, suppose we want to get to this point over here. We would take a certain proportion of V2, we travel along that direction, and then we travel back along the v1 direction 
to this vector. And so therefore we have a certain amount of v2 and a certain amount of v1 added together and we get to this point. Same thing if we want to get for example over here. We would travel along v1 for a certain amount and then we travel along v2. Likewise for any point here. We travel along v1 and back along v2. We can see that with a linear combination of v1 and v2 we can get to any point in R2. And once again we can show this by looking at the augmented matrix. We have our vectors 2, 1 and 1, 3. So what linear combination then will make up a point B? Let's say the point B is once again 2, 2. This row reduces to 1, 0, 0, 1, point 8, point 4. And in general, you can see that it will be consistent for any B because we have a 1, 0, 0, 1 in this part of the matrix. Therefore, we'll have a solution for any B. However, suppose now that we have, again, our example like this, and our set consists of the vectors 2, 1 and the vector 4, 2. So we have two vectors once again. Let's call them V1 and V2. And if you draw them, here is our V1 and here is V2. V2 is a multiple of V1 and therefore the span of this is once again going to be just a line. Because once again we cannot get to any given point except on this line by using a linear combination of these two. So therefore it's not just the number of vectors in the set that determines the span but something else. And that something else is the linear dependence relationship of the vectors in the set. So the span depends on a number of linearly independent vectors in the set. A set is linearly dependent if the linear combinations of the vectors in the set equal to zero has a non-trivial solution. Which means that not all of the x's are equal to zero. So suppose that we have the linear combination that is denoted by what we just wrote above and suppose for example that v3 in this set is equal to 2v2 then we can actually see that 0v1 plus negative 2 times v2 plus v3 plus 0 times v4 plus 0 times everything else up until the end is equal to 0. And this is true because of what we just said up here. So therefore we can see that x is equal to 0, negative 2, 1, and the rest zeros, but not all these entries are equal to 0 because of these two, and therefore this is a non-trivial solution. And therefore, this set is linearly dependent. Because we saw that we can create one of the vectors out of a linear combination of the others, specifically here, v3 and v2 are related. So the span of a set of vectors will only depend on the linearly independent vectors in the set. So going from our earlier example, this set is linearly dependent since we saw that we can create the vector v3 out of a linear combination 
of the vectors v1 and v2. This was from our example above, right here. So in fact, we can see that we can determine the span from the vectors corresponding to the basic variables in the homogeneous equation. So this is the augmented matrix of the homogeneous equation for these three vectors. And that row reduces to 1, 0, 0, 1, point 8, point 4, 0, 0. And we can see that we have two basic variables. And therefore the span will only depend on these two and not on the third. As another example, let's look in three dimensions. So suppose that we have a set that is 1, 2, 3, 2, 1, 2, and 3, 3, 5. The homogeneous equation, written here in the augmented matrix form, row reduces to 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. Once again, we see that we have only two basic variables, even though we have three vectors in R3. And therefore, we're only going to have a span corresponding to two vectors. Well, two vectors in R3 spans a plane in R3, since we only have the two linearly independent vectors. So what this looks like is we have a plane. This is in R3. And our vectors, in this case, are going to be all on this plane. So all three of those vectors, in one way or another, are going to be on the same plane. They're not going to point in another direction. Therefore, we can see that we cannot get to any point outside of this plane with a linear combination of these vectors. For example, suppose we have a point B over here that we want to get to that's not in this plane. Well, we can't get to it. It's not possible with a linear combination of vectors 1, 2, and 3. This also says that the augmented matrix made up of our vectors and that point B is going to be inconsistent because we cannot possibly get to it. In general, the span in a given space is going to be determined by the number of linearly independent vectors that you have in your set. So in R3, if we have two linearly independent vectors, we will span a plane in R3. If we have one, we'll span a line in R3. Likewise, in R2, when we had two linearly independent vectors, we could span all of R2. But if we had just one, or two linearly dependent vectors, we could only span a line in R2. And this applies to all higher dimensions as well, and to any dimension. So overall, we have seen how to determine the span of a set of vectors based on their linear dependence properties. This is very useful when trying to determine if a solution is possible as a linear combination of a set of vectors, or to see why it is not.